How y'all doing? About a year ago from the time I'm creating this video here, I did a book review on Tannis Lee's Knight's Master, which I deeply enjoyed. And the thing is, this is the first of five books of Tales from the Flat Earth series that she did from the 70s up through the 80s. And because I was so curious of how this series went, I went ahead and bought all five of the series. I even bought the first book again because I wanted to have all the matching covers there and these wonderful covers by, uh, what was it, Bastian, was a Bastian Le Coup, um, Le Coup de Harm, if I'm pronouncing it right, it's French artist right here. So yeah, Death Master, I'm sorry, Knight's Master, Death Master, Del um, Delusions Master, um, Delir um, Delirium's Mistress, and the final book, Before Her Death, Night Sorceries. Now, I've already did the first book, um, so I'm going to go ahead and get try and get all five reviewed here. Because I think a lot of you people who like adult fantasy, and uh, that doesn't pull punches, has a good strong sense of myth, beautiful prose and colorful um, language and descriptions, very visual, this is a series for you. But as I said, it doesn't hold punches on the adult themes. It's nothing pornographic or anything, but it's a case of um, if you're kind of squeamish of things that are, can be done to human beings throughout this, okay, you may want to step back from this. But if you understand the line between fantasy and reality, go for it. I definitely suggest this. So, I'm going to view the second book, Death's Master, of the Tales of the Flat Earth series. Okay. So in the first book, Knight's Master, we're introduced to Arzron, and all the stories involved are involved directly or indirectly through him, and you know, and how he influences his um, world through his cruelty and tricks and everything, and how it kind of comes back to him, and you know, and all forth that in the end. And the story, and the first book takes place over centuries. Now here we talk about the the other one. There are five dark lords. Arzron's one of them. And here we talk about another one of the. Uh, Ulum, who's the Dark Lord of Death. So, the story begins with this queen, Narison, who rules this city um, very sternly and cruelly. She lives, you know, for her own pleasures, but, you know, she she loves to rule and she, you know, wants to rule as long as she can. While on hu out hunting, she encounters this, um, this sorcerer who tries to seduce her. Um, but and he couldn't do it by seduction. He tries to sleep with her by force because he, apparently he's under um, a very twisted um, curse by another wizard. You know, and I won't get into details of that. And the thing was, when she refuses him, he curses her and the land she rules. They, and what it is, the land will not bear fruit. Children will not be born. Everything will just run down. Everyone will be in misery until she herself has a child. Unfortunately, it cannot be with a living male um, person. So here's a woman who, you know, you know, you know, she's a lesbian because she, you know, and so this is going to be a double whammy for her. So she, and she has, to, unfortunately, you know, with this curse, she has to go through all that was prophesied. So she couldn't just jump to the end. So, um, fortunately, with um, Narison, um, tries to have children through all these men, but none of them um, prevail. Then she hears about this one witch who lives in a faraway um, land. She finds this witch, and she is a servant of Elum, the Lord of Death. She, with her help, Elum visits her, and she makes a deal with Death. And Elum says he will help her um, take this, you know, relieve her of this curse, but she will, when she dies, will serve him for, you know, to accompany him along with, you know, others that made a similar deal, she'll, she'll serve him for like a thousand years before she passes on be after that into, the, into his realm to keep him company. Well, she's desperate enough, she decides to do it. So he takes a, um, a beautiful, effeminate um, corpse, animates it, and, well, they have a child through that. As saying, this is an adult series, this is some of the things that happens often. So the child is, you know, conceived and is born, and the land comes back again. But she was poisoned by her own guards, and she dies. And the guard and the um, priest and all that not only bury her, they bury the child with um, with her. And this, you know, and that's where we introduce to one of the three main characters in this series, Simu. So we're introduced to the young child Simu, who's a baby. They're crying in the tomb of um, his mother. And these second, these group of um, Eshvu, which are the second level of um, demons, of you know, who serve the um, the demon princes in the in the, under, in the underworld, they uh, they see this child and they sort of take 
the child and they try and rate, you know, they take care of it, they play tricks and stuff like that um, in their own manner. And the magics they perform are sort of imprinted onto the child. And of course, they can only take care of, they can only look after the child at night because by day, you know, they leave the child somewhere where, some, um, you know, they could uh, give it some form of food and, you know, lay it low while they come back at night. For a while, they look after this child and then leave him, leave the child on the doorstep of a church. And that's where Simu starts growing up um, throughout um, his younger years, being raised as a prince, where we're introduced to our second character in this, that's Zerum. Now, Zerum is the son of a king who has many wives, and um, Zerum is the son of a um, of his favorite wife. He was already different in appearance, you know, to a questionable means, and there was already rumor going around how some people will um, try to harm this um, Zerum, you know, so the mother was very afraid, so it makes a deal with the witch. And the witch will say, um, takes Simu and the mother to a well, and this well has this ability to, um, you know, set it through, you know, there's fire in it there that causes to where, the, you know, once the child survives, it, they become invincible and, you know, in, immortal in a sense for a long period of time. There's a limit. But, you know, now he's going to be invincible. No harm can come to it. Those who do harm will be harmed back into return. And, you know, will, you know, never die of old age, at least not, you know, for a very long time, it says. Unfortunately, when people start finding out he cannot be harmed as he grows up, he, he he's started to seen as an evil force and possibly demonic. Well, they took him to these uh, um, to this group of um, scholars and priests, or what I can't remember what they were, but they says, well, okay, the child goes in daylight, so it can't be demo but not demonic by nature there, but the father sends him off to church, and that's where um, Zerum and Simu uh, meet and grow up together. Okay, so um, Simu and Zerum they grow up together in this church, they're raised in the church ways, and eventually um, on their way to become priests themselves. And everything is going in their own fashion, you know, you learn the ways, and they um, eventually start trying to help others with the poor and all this. Unfortunately, um, a scandal happens um, on one of the priests' journeys that causes them to, um, forces them to leave out of this church. So, uh... With the um, problem, and again, I'm kind of shortcutting this for you. So there's a lot of details involved, so I don't want to spoil too much. So, they're now this game to church. Zerum, not knowing you know where his life's going to go, why, you know he finds out he's invincible throughout this, or you know, that no harm can come through this ordeal. So, um, and Simu starts to find about himself his own abilities. He starts to, because one of the things I didn't mention earlier was that Simu has one of the um, due to. Um, the nature of uh, uh, that he's not quite that he's very different from other normal beings not only from his conception he can switch genders from male to female physically to so become a handsome young man to a beautiful woman and you know this kind of you know adds a bit of complication to the relationship he has with Zerum so as Zerum is you know now trying to find you know what you know trying to find out by himself through Osran Dark Lord which everyone advises is a bad idea he starts to wander to find him Simu starts to follow him for uh, and follows him for a while to the end, and eventually they come to a place where um, Arzran, in disguise, um, talks to Zerum and um, has him go off in his own direction because he, he did hear his call, but he's more interested in Simu. Uh, one thing I didn't mention about Simu is that one of the things that the Eshva has left for him on the doorstep of the, of the church, which he got back, was a green necklace. Um, made by the Drin, the lowest order of demons. And the symbol on it is Simu's name in their language. A little side note there, that'll come in handy. So, um, now that he's, that Zerum is sent off by Arzran, Arzran has taken an interest in Simu. And that's where um, Simu takes a, um, takes in a new um, um, direction in his life, because Arzran is going to make this person a hero. But before that, we have a little bit of a complication with Simu's mother. Okay, so we go back to Narison, who is Simu's mother. She's down into the land of the dead, and she convinces um, Ilum, the Lord of Death, to send her back to the world of living. Ilum can do this for um, on a certain occasion, so she does. And she tries to get back her kingdom, get revenge on those who betrayed her and everything, and, you know, causes major havoc as she does that when she gets back to her own kingdom. Arzran and Simu come by and eventually stop her. And... One of the things about Simu growing up is that Simu was always afraid of things that are dead. 
sees a corpse of some kind, just instantly fears. And after defends with his mother, he now becomes, a, you know, Arzran wants tells him that he's going to make Simu a hero, and Simu is going to make his life work to stop death, and that's going to be his journey. And so Arzran sends off to on a quest that will stop that. What is this quest? Well, it involves a well. You see, there are, there are multiple levels of the flat earth here. You have the land of the dead and deep underground. You have the underworld, the uh, lower earth where the demons rule. You're like ours, run, who's, who rules there, that's his kingdom. You have the middle earth, which is where humans and mortals live, and the ocean around, and the seas around it. And then you have the heavens, the upper earth. And in the upper earth, which is introduced in the first book, there is a well made of glass that is, uh, the water can you know, grant immortality. It's kind of a weird universal joke because no one can reach up to heaven to, you know, so to, you know, to steal from it despite the fact there's two guards. It's one of those odd ironies. But funny thing is, in the, in the geographically speaking, in the land of the living, the Middle Earth, there's a well, not a fancy well, but there's a well directly beneath that. So the witch that helped Narison um, contact the loom earlier in the book, she finds this and creates a small uh, temple or sacred ground out of this from a nearby village. And, you know, she puts all these beautiful plants and guarded by these um, animals, and huge guards and stuff like um, and monsters surround it. Every few years, a group of a handful of women go by and become as caretakers of this well as in relationship to the well of immortality. And these, uh, it's a group of virgins, mind you. This is where we're introduced to our third character, Cassifei. She's one of the new batch of virgins that's handpicked. Except they're all exceptionally beautiful. They're handpicked. One of the reasons they're handpicked that way, and she was quite so. Because that's because of her origins. You see, she is half human and half elemental, and half elemental is one that is the lowest orders of the beings of the upper earth. I think of them kind of like angels in a sense. But they tell you can find out her story as you read the book. And the thing is, she does not want to be a priestess at all but she's forced into it. Every other girl wants to be this. And those who do leave the sacred grounds here, um, you know, either take their own lives, they live alone, what have you, you know, they, it doesn't come happy to them. They just don't want to leave. So now she's forced into this, you know, and she's um, so a part of a group of virgins. And the thing is, um, as she's there, she's off on her own. She doesn't cause any fights, but she's... Um, she, because of her elemental being, she starts to see past illusions, patches here and there, more so as it goes along. So that's uh, Cassafe, and she will later meet up with Simu as he arrives there. So Simu comes and finds a way to overcome the barriers that are stopping him from getting into the to the sacred grounds, and that's you know well, he breaks, um, you know the magic around it, and in so doing. He creates the, um, you know, he breaks the well in the upper earth, and, then, and so in essence comes into the well in the lower earth, and that little this water in there now becomes the water immortality which he collects. Um, so him and Cassafe, you know, they escape all the guards around him after the temple breaks down. They collect the water to go on a long journey, and in so doing, they um, they take after a long journey, they finally take a drop of immortality. They become immortals themselves. Later, came across a very, um, you know, sick and twisted, dishonest man here, who also, you know, sneaks in and takes a drop of, him, you know, takes a drink of it himself. Now he becomes immortal, and in so doing, at a turn of events, Arzran manipulates things again to where now there's a whole city, that it will be the city of immortals, and Simu will be the ruler and Cassifei his wife, and this is the city that Simu will um, study and raise his armies and you know and find a way to uh, study all he can to defeat death. You know, doesn't explain how, you know, but it's one of those things you find, you read about mythology um, and how they explain these things. Of course, after Rao, what happened with Zerum, you know, his companion and, you know, uh, from, you know, from his days, you know, growing up a priest. Well, after a long and, uh, you know, after a long journey of his own, he ends up in the bottom of the ocean. It's mentioned in the first book that the oceans are um, their own realm, where even Osran, you know, cannot you know, inter you know, interfere or take hold of. He can only do it on lands of the, of the Middle Earth, but not the oceans. Well, we start to see who inhabits this. this apparently, is a, a group of beings who live under the ocean here, and as Zerum is taking in, they were curious about him first, and that they can't harm him, and eventually he starts to learn their magics. 
and he becomes this huge powerful sorcerer as you know unlike you know what they find in the upper parts and as so he comes he finds a way to escape and in so doing he comes to um he finds ulum and makes a deal with him to help stop simu in this um city of immortals and that's where i'm going to um try and leave off from the rest of the story because then I'm giving away the ending. I kind of gave you a rough draft of what all the events that happened here. It's a pretty thick book and I have skimmed out a lot in the devils and the details. Well, maybe not the best way to do it, but the details, you know, give you quite a different experience. So that's what happened. So you got basically, um, you know, Illum, Simu, and Cassafe, um, mostly the first two, but Cassafe sort of joins in on that. Now, I will say this, um, Two of the three figures is tragic, you know, in the end of this. And the third one brings us the ending of the story to bittersweet at best. And it's one of those cases of story of it's not like a simple quest beginning, middle, end, you know. Um, it's more like you're taking a backseat drive and you're watching these characters, their merits and flaws, and you're just watching the series in the end, um, how their stories turn out for good or for ill. Um, like you're reading it in its own history. That's what I kind of like about this. Um, I definitely like the first book. I enjoy it a bit lengthier than the um, previous one here. But hopefully that might interest you to continue reading the series there. So you read Knight's Master, there's Death's Master. And I'll get started on the third, I'm in the middle of reading the third book here as I'm making this video. So hopefully you will um, give it a go. Death's Master by Tanith Lee. Thank you all for watching. Have a nice day.